This is a toy wheel cutter that I got from Carver Tech. And I've seen it sold under other brand names and stuff online too, so I think it's fairly common design. Now when you get it, the first thing you're going to want to do is just drill through one side, flip the wood over, and drill straight through again until the wood pops out. And that looks like the way you're supposed to use it. But the problem with that is, you're going to get um, like the edges all torn up. And the reason is, in the centre, there's sort of like no cutting part, so you come in one side and drill it just until you, uh, you know, touch the edge there, and the wheel fits exactly snugly. There's no more room for this hub to go up. So when you come on the other side, and if your wood is not the exact thickness of the wheel, what you're going to do is, as you're going sort of a bit deeper, you're going to start ripping up this this hub and start, you know, smashing your ends, and you'll end up with something torn out like that. So, making the wood the exact thickness of the wheel is one solution, but it's um it's fairly hard to do, and it's not too practical. It also requires you being precise when you cut both sides of the wood. And it doesn't eliminate the problem that there's no gap in there for like uh, wood chips to escape from. Here's a schematic of how I do the wheels, which I find gives me a much more sort of consistent quality when they come out. So this wheel cutter is a 40 millimeter diameter and it cuts it half an inch thick. So what I do is on one side, I come to the wood and I cut it just sort of flush to the edge. Then what I do is take like a uh, Forsten a bit and I drill out this sort of like little little sort of like bay here so it's 10 millimeters from the top of the wood. So what's that going to do is it's going to make a little sort of hub on the inside here. So then when I go to cut this side it doesn't matter if the wood is thicker than the final wheel because I've got this sort of gap for it to move around and where it can sort of clear the chips and cut it a bit more nicely. So with the 40 millimeter cutter, you want to do it at a speed of about 500 RPM. Start working with that and test and see if you need to go any faster or slower. Now, because this is like symmetric and has the same weight over either side, it's uh, fairly safe to run it at a faster speed, unlike some of those offset circle cutters, which are an accident waiting to happen. Uh, the only thing with running it faster is that you got to uh, think about the uh, bit heating up too much. So if you're going to run it faster, like I get a good result with pine if I run it at about a thousand, but you want to give it a bit of a rest. So don't try to do like 50 at once. Just do like maybe sort of five, stop and do another procedure and then come back a bit. Now the best woods are hard woods which are sort of oily and nice and dense. So I've found spotted gum gives me like the nicest finish on the wheels. So these ones come out really good without any need for sanding. Now after that, Jarrah works out uh, pretty nicely too. It's fairly sort of dense with uh, sort of like make sort of small little chips in the fibers that work good. Now an example of a bad material, here's some uh, black butt timber which is uh, good for many other purposes but it's got really sort of long stringy fibres in it. So what happens is it's very easy for the cutter to sort of bite into it and uh, chew it up. Another example is some uh, cedar I've got. Now this is sort of recycled from uh, old sort of boards around the door so it's sort of aged it's got a lot of elasticity and very stringy uh, fibers in it and I've been having a really hard time finding a good sort of setting for the speed now again with the speed uh, you don't want to go too slow because if you're sort of doing it a bit slow what will happen is when it's making the final cut where it releases the wheel if it's going a bit too slow, it'll leave sort of like a big sort of, you know, gouge mark in it when it releases. So you want to go, start from 500, 
but you want to do it sort of as fast as you can without heating the cutter up. Before I go to do a big wheel cutting session, I um, like to just sharpen the edge of my blade with the strop. So what I've got here is uh, kangaroo leather glued around a bit of dowel, so that's nice and tough. And it's just the right size for the curve, so I'll give it just a few strokes. Not using any polishing compound or anything, I don't want to take any uh, steel off the blade. Then with like a flat bit of leather, I'll just sort of like shape it around the curve. And give it a gentle net rub there. So that will make the blade nice and sharp. Now if I find that that wasn't enough, my blade's getting old and a bit blunt, what I'll do when that time comes is take like a fine diamond lap and I'll do the back of each one an equal number of times on each side and that should sharpen it back up nicely but that's kind of like only when I really need to do it because that has the potential to change the shape and the radius of the cutter. If it's even worse than that and the front is chipped well then it's time to throw it away because um, not many people working in the garage have the skills to be able to sharpen that. So on this strip of uh, marked out spots, five centimetres apart, so that gives room for the uh, four centimetre cutter and to leave a bit of space for the cutter clearance. Now on the underside, I'm just going to lay down some uh, cloth tape. So this is to uh, sort of strengthen the back so when I do the six millimeter holes all the way through it'll reduce any kind of tear through. Uh, the masking tape's not really strong enough. Right, that should do the job fine. So the first step is to do all of my 16 millimeter plugs. So I'm gonna run this at about a thousand RPM and first I'll just get it into the wood so it's uh, flat and flush. Okay, so now that I can sit it flush against the surface, I want it to go 10 millimeter from the bottom, and this is 20 millimeter thick. So, uh, just on the gauge on my handle, I'm setting the depth to 10 millimeters. So now at the same speed, I'll use a, a good quality six millimetre brad point drill to go all the way through. Now the reason I did the plugs before the drilling is because the tip of the force knob will leave a nice sort of little centre hole that will make it very easy to line the drill bit up. But if I drilled the holes first there'd be a big wide six millimetre hole and it would be easy to like misalign this. Now that was the final hole. So to look at the other side. Yeah, the tape did a pretty good job of keeping the holes fairly clean. A few just got a little bit of tearing, but it won't take much more than just a quick like sand to flatten them out nice and smooth. So I'll change the speed settings and get it set up to do the wheel cutting. Right, so first to do this side of the wheel. So this is the side we're just gonna go in and do it until it just touches and forms a hub. So I've changed the speed uh, to 580 RPM to be exact. And if you have some kind of blower, it's a good idea to uh, use that to get rid of the dust as well while you're working. Because that'll make a huge difference to uh, how nice your surface comes out. Otherwise you uh, need to get in there and just sort of like blow it or lift it. Okay, so 
I was just using the speed that was, uh, you know, making the chips form at, you know, a right, nice rate, not like too powdery, not too deep. And that surface came out pretty good. I'm not going to need to really do any sanding to that. Okay, so now this is the uh, bottom side with the little plug drilled in. So we've got the plug which is also going to allow chips to collect instead of gathering up and getting caught in this little segment here. So I'm going to go uh, all the way through until the wheel pops out. So I could tell when the wheel was about to pop out by just a change in the speed the drill was making. And that came out nice and cleanly. So there's this little edge, which uh, is easy to peel off, but um, I'll show you how I do them sort of all together as one group. It's one of the easy ways to uh, take the edges off, is to just load them up on a, on a bit of dowel and use like the um, belt. Okay, so they're all good. So after any light sanding it might still need, then I'll finish them off by giving them some oil. And what the oil will do is it will help it swell and fill up any like little gaps or nicks you've put in it, and it will give it a nice finish. So I use 100% um, tongue oil, so that keeps everything all sort of organic and natural especially for baby toys because um, that's what like babies really care about. 